guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we are doing my top five freezer books. So let me do a quick explanation here for those of you that may or may not be familiar. I grew up in the generation of Friends, so I'm a little bit older than some of the other booktubers on here. I love the TV show friends and I used to watch it with my family and there are just so many iconic things from that TV show that I continually think of and say during certain situations like um, every time I <laughs> think about or make a trifle I think sauteed with peas and onions and just like little things like that. If you're not familiar with the TV show you need to watch it ASAP. It still holds up to the test of time. It's so so good. But anyway, one episode, Joey is a reading of The Shining and Rachel is reading Little Women and they're kind of teasing each other about the books they're reading and they decide to swap. And one thing that Joey said while he was reading The Shining is that um, his book was in the freezer and that's because it scared him so much that he had to put it in the freezer because that like made it safe like the book was so scary that he couldn't even have it in the room with him like he had to like put it in the freezer <laughs> so I thought this was kind of a fun idea for like a spooky reads a book tag so these are the top five scariest spookiest books that I have read now keep in mind I am a huge baby and up until last year like one of the Harry Potter books was the scariest book that I've ever read um, I like being like a creepy out and scared a little bit but I am in no needs into like gore or like major horror I don't like Stephen King or anything like that so if you're looking for like horrifying disturbing books this is not the place for you but if you're a little bit more of a baby like I am and you just like some like creepier things to read like around Halloween time then stay tuned Coming in at number five is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I have been talking about this book nonstop on my channel, which is kind of hilarious because I only gave it 3.5 stars. It's definitely not one of my favorite books, but it's one of those books that just like sticks with you and you can't get out of your head. This is about a middle-aged man that goes to his hometown for a funeral and kind of relives things from his childhood, magical surrealism. This is technically an adult book, but I think it's appropriate for a young adult as well. It has some super creepy, disturbing things in here. There are like ghosts and like demons and like ugh, whatever you want to call them, like magical things that happen. There's some really creepy, gross, weird things in here. It was like right on the edge for my limit. <laughs> so definitely a spookier, like scary read and it comes in number five at my list. Coming in at number four, we're going to put the Mara Dyer series, particularly book two and three three. This one is about a girl, Mara, who has been in some sort of accident and she is kind of trying to recover from that and also trying to kind of figure out what happened and then it just goes like crazy from there. And she is very much an unreliable narrator as well. I thought that book one was very much like disturbing and weird, but I didn't think it was like scary. But being in this world for three whole books and me not reading these like dark contemporary slash paranormal type books uh, really kind of got to me. Like I actually was like staying at home by myself because my husband was out of town and I remember being like freaked out about going to bed because I thought someone was like over the bed, which I, <laughs> I really don't like those like realistic kind of like scary spooky books. I did enjoy my time in this, but it's definitely not one that I would read again. So not like crazy scary, but but it definitely kind of just like, it kind of like darkened my mood. We'll, we'll put it that way. Coming in at number three is Monstrous Beauty by Elizabeth Fama. When I first read this book, I did not like it because of the creepy scariness factor. I was wanting like mermaidy fun and I hadn't read a dark mermaid book before. But when I read it the second time, I realized how genius it was. This is a very, very loose Little Mermaid retelling. There are trigger warnings for a raping here, just FYI. I do have a whole book talk on this with spoilers, so I'll put a link for that as well. But this one is just so creepy is set in two time periods we're following a mermaid i think like in the 1800s and like some magical things that happen there and then we're in modern time with our main protagonist hester and there are creepy things happening to her and she is like trying to tie together her family and this mystery from the past and you're learning things like as you go along so it's definitely got that mystery aspect there's definitely like magical things that happen it's super creepy and spooky and really good for halloween and this one because it's one of the first ones I read that was like that 
just totally like, ooh, it creeped me out. Coming in at number two is The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. This one is very, very unique and very cool. It's one of my favorite books. This one is set in modern times where vampires are like just out and about and it's kind of considered like a disease so you can like catch vampirism and they're trying to like quarantine parts of the country to keep the vampirism from spreading but of course it keeps spreading because the vampires keep wanting to like suck blood and kill people and all that kind of stuff and there are these designated cold towns where they try to contain all the vampires and they have bounties out for the vampires and it's like almost like apocalyptic in a way. It's very unique. I really enjoyed it. The opening scene starts out with a girl who is at a party and she wakes up in a bathtub. It was just real creepy. I like had to get up in the middle of the night a couple times and like look around and ugh, usually paranormal doesn't do that to me. It's definitely got some gore in here as well, like more than what I was used to, but I just, I really enjoyed it still. I liked the concept a lot. I thought it was very well done. It was different from a lot of the other books and I think it's my favorite vampire book. And lastly on this list, coming in at number one, is The Madman's Daughter by Megan Shepard. I finally got this book and I'm so excited to talk about it. You guys, this book is so, so good. It is a series. The first book is a retelling, sort of, of The Isle of Dr. Moreau, which is about a man who uses vivisection to put animal people, animal parts together to make like human-like creatures. It's very creepy and I need to read it. So that's a retelling of this sort of where his daughter is trying to find him and figure out if he's alive or his legacy or like whatever is happening set like way past the events of Isle Do of Dr. Moreau. And then the second book is a retelling of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And the third book is a retelling of Frankenstein. This one is definitely the spookiest and the creepiest. The third book would come next for me. The second book I didn't really think was that creepy. They're set again more like in the 1800s. I think we're in London as well. It is super creepy, super dark. <laughs> oh, I don't know how to explain it. I The audiobook for this is just so good. I was like reading it and walking through um, and going through a walk like kind of in a wooded area and there were like a bunch of crows around me. It was like around Halloween and I remember just being like giving me like goosebumps. This one I will give you a trigger warning for something strange. It does talk about vivisection which is surgery done on live animals and there are a couple of descriptive parts. Again I'm a big baby and I don't like like animal cruelty but for some reason like I pushed through because the way that this is told everything is told for like a reason. The scary spooky parts are done for a purpose and they're not just put in there to creep you out or scare you like they're there for a reason and so that's what I like about all of these books that I'm listing is I don't like books that just throw gore and violence and scary stuff in there just for the purpose of scaring you. I like them when they are part of a story and the arc of our character is so good and there's so many twists and turns. I literally had my jaw dropping several times while reading this. I really want to read it again for fall but I have so many other books to read. But I just, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. I loved it so much. I had to tell my husband the entire synopsis of the book, which I never do, like from start to finish because I was so, so into it. But it's it's got some creepy stuff in there, but I think that if you like that kind of a thing, you'll love it. Okay, you guys, those are the top five freezer books that I have, scariest creepiest books that I've ever read. I hope to do this every year and I don't want to read like extremely scary books but I'll be interested to see if anything I read tops this list or if it stays the same like from year to year or if there are things that kind of like creep me out and spook me more or whatever happens just naturally on its own. So let me know if you guys have any freezer books and if you guys even know what I'm talking about in the comments down below and I'll see you guys next time on the bright side. Bye!